from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Voting restrictions put in place by lawmakers in Helena will remain for the June primary election. Coming up, find out why the Montana Supreme Court says it's leaving the law in place. A new report released expounds on out-of-state tourism estimates in 2021 and what that means for Montana. Find out more coming up. College students are getting a crash course on the housing shortage. I'm Nichelle Medina with more on the rising rent prices in some college towns. Oh, you're chuckling already. <laughs> not, not something to <laughs> chuckle about, but yeah, yeah. yeah my uh, college student has got a crash course in that too. Oh yeah. That's why he's still living in the bedroom he grew up in. Well, and yeah. you're being a good dad for that because you've seen the rent prices, all of that. Yeah, That's absolutely. It, yeah. Well, good morning, Southwest Montana. <laughs> it's 630 on this Wednesday. It's also my mom's birthday. I know she always tunes in at this hour. So I just wanted to say happy birthday. She's retiring in three weeks. Oh, um, wow. It's a very exciting month That's for her. Awesome. So just want to say to I love you and I miss you and I'll see you soon. Happy birthday, Mom. I hope you have a good one and congratulations on retirement. That's Unfortunately, awesome you can't thing. give us some good weather news, though, for not your here. birthday. No, yeah. I can't help you out here. Uh, <laughs> it, well, it, it's not going to be terrible today if you like clouds. Yeah, uh, and it could be you, worse, a.k.a. tomorrow. Mm, uh, thank you very much. That's exactly <laughs> right. You stole my thunder and there might be some thunder with it, too. No, <laughs> clouds today, windy conditions as well as that system rolls in. Not too bad out there right now. Fairly average, uh, 36 and uh, NS40 in Dillon, uh, Wise River right now at the freezing mark. A little cooler in Butte. Uh, a little bit cooler still in West Yellowstone. As far as your day goes, we're going to hit into those mid-60s uh, as this system rolls through there. Chance of some showers in the evening. A really good chance of showers, in fact, as your uh, Wednesday turns into Thursday. For Butte, windy conditions this afternoon. Uh, temperatures into the low 60s and then... Uh, change coming. Details of that, Ashley, in about 10 minutes. We will see in a bit. The pandemic hit the Montana tourism industry hard in many parts across the state, affecting both local economies and the state budget. But a new report shows Montana's tourism industry is returning to full force. MTN's Tom Buchanan looks at the numbers. A new report out this month shows estimates of 2021 tourism visitation to Montana. The report of estimates from the Institute for Tourism and Recreation Research out of the University of Montana goes on to say that while there was a decline in tourism and spending in 2020 due to COVID, there was a noticeable increase in 2021. In fact, the spending in 2021 surpassed that of 2019, while the number of people were a bit lower than 2019. When compared to the rest of the country, Montana's travel industry recovered faster and was not nearly as deeply impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. All in all, non-resident visitors to Montana spent an estimated $5.15 billion in the state in 2021. This is good news, as Montana's economy depends on out-of-state tourism. For example, the Montana Historical Society's new building, the Montana Heritage Center, depends heavily on a bed tax to fund their new building. Talking with a couple of local businesses, 2020 and 2021 were surprisingly good years for some, saying it was the mix of local support with tourism dollars that helped them thrive. Because people in our community in particular pivoted hard to supporting our downtown and local small businesses because we wanted to see them succeed and continue to live and thrive. The locals are terrific, and I feel like we would survive with just local traffic, but tourism is a huge boost. Where tourism is headed in 2022 is anyone's guess. On one hand, COVID restrictions continuing to be lifted bodes well for many industries. Then again, rising gas prices could very well impact the distance traveled by out-of-state tourists. Reporting in Helena, Tom Buchanan, MTN News. The school year is coming to an end for college students across the country. Millions of students faced high housing costs this past year, and prices are only going to go higher, especially for those living off campus. Nichelle Medina reports for CBS News. College senior Jennifer Lopez learned a tough lesson about supply and demand. Dorms and apartments around UC Berkeley in Northern California are hard to come by. She couldn't afford the $3,700 a month rent on this one bedroom, so she's sharing it with three roommates. I definitely was not prepared to be this stressed about housing every year. Rent prices in college towns across the country are skyrocketing. Chapel Hill, home to the University of North Carolina, has seen rents jump 24 percent since 2020. Tempe, where Arizona State is located, is up 31 percent. 
And there's been a 36% jump in Knoxville, where students go to the University of Tennessee. In many of these college towns, uh, the universities or the market where these universities are haven't created enough housing to really support a growing student body. You have students who have to commute very long distances in order to attend classes or end up actually being homeless, which would be anything from crashing on couches or sleeping in their cars. Because of a lack of housing last fall, the University of Tampa in Florida offered freshmen a break on tuition if they deferred one year. And in many college towns, it doesn't appear this fall will be any better. These Berkeley students had a tough time just seeing a place. We just saw them on Zillow, requested to wear uh, no luck, unfortunately. They were able to find a one bedroom for 3000 a month, which might turn out to be a bargain of sorts because rent prices are expected to keep climbing. Nisha Medina, CBS News, Los Angeles. And we checked at Zillow for apartments that are in the Bozeman area, and this is what we found. The lowest price listing is currently $1,150 a month for a two-bedroom apartment in Belgrade. The least expensive listing in Bozeman on Zillow is $1,300 a month for a one-bedroom, 350-square-foot apartment. The least expensive two-bedroom apartment in Bozeman on Zillow is $1,800 a month. Quite big numbers there. The Montana Supreme Court has temporary, temporarily restored new state voting laws for the June primary election. Those laws prevent same-day voter registration and require voters that use student IDs for identification to bring additional documents. Last month, Montana Secretary of State Christy Jacobson's office asked Supreme Court justices to stay a district court order that blocked the two new regulations. The Supreme Court justices ruled staying the preliminary injunction would cause less voter confusion and disruption of election administration. The 2022 Montana primary election is Tuesday, June 7th. And for the first time in 30 years, Montana has two races for seats in the U.S. House of Representatives. MTN's Jonathan Imbarian introduces us to the people running for the Democratic nomination in the first congressional district. In Montana's Western Congressional District, three candidates are making the argument that they're the best choice to bring the Democratic Party's message into the general election. Cora Newman, Monica Trinnell, and Tom Winter are all seeking the Democratic nomination in the 1st Congressional District, which covers much of western Montana, including the cities of Kalispell, Missoula, Butte, and Bozeman. Newman is a nonprofit executive from Bozeman, who's led organizations working on health care, economic development, and public lands. She says that professional experience and her personal history, losing her father in an accident, then leaving Montana as a child when her stepfather needed to find better work, make her the best candidate. I think Montanans are looking for someone who they can relate to and who understands their struggle. Someone who has a track record um, of improving access to health care, which is a primary need. Um, again, who understands the importance of affordable housing, who knows what it's like to struggle to make ends meet. I think that's what Montanans are looking for. Newman says more resources should be directed to housing development and assistance. And she wants to support Montana agriculture, saying they're feeling impacts from the changing climate. Newman returned to Montana with her family about three years ago. She briefly ran for U.S. Senate in 2020. Her relatively recent return to the state has drawn criticism, including from a political committee supporting Trinnell. But Newman says she'd been trying to move back for years, and she believes voters will be able to relate. At least half, if not more, of the kids I grew up with left and came back, or and some are still trying to come back. Um, so I think it's actually a privilege in some ways to be able to stay in Montana your whole life. Uh, and I, I know that the majority of Montanans understand that. Trinnell is an attorney from Missoula with years of experience in energy and utility regulation cases. She previously worked for the Montana Public Service Commission and Montana Consumer Council and says she's the candidate with a proven history of getting things done in this state. I have practiced law and um, been on the side of Montanans uh, my whole career here in Montana. I've served Montana, delivered for Montana, and I will continue to do that. Trinnell believes Montanans concerns about housing are part of a bigger feeling the state is changing for its average residents. 
She calls climate change an existential threat for Montana, and says her background means she can help tackle an energy transition. In 2004, Trinnell ran in the Republican primary for Public Service Commission. In 2020, she was the Democratic candidate for PSC, in a district that includes seven counties now in the Western Congressional District. She believes her experience, starting from her time growing up on an eastern Montana ranch, makes her the strongest candidate to appeal to voters across the political spectrum. I know these communities. They're, they're you know, it's, it's what I, where I grew up. It's what I know. Um, and I think, you know, it's the power of showing up, which I have been doing and I will continue to do. I will work with everyone from Montana because it's my home. Winter currently works on improving broadband access in underserved areas. In 2018, he was elected as a state representative from Missoula. He says his victory over a Republican incumbent in a district that voted for President Trump shows he can get his message across to persuadable voters. We are in such a crisis moment at all times that we have to have actual representation that not only has won over people from the other side, but can answer with community-focused issues like you know, making sure you have teeth when you're old, or hearing aids, or, you know, you're, uh, you get the dignity of a good paycheck. Winter previously ran in the Democratic primary for U.S. House in 2020. He's running on progressive policies like universal health care, canceling student debt, aggressive climate action, and raising taxes on the wealthy, and says the National Democratic Party hasn't always delivered for people. While he's raised significantly less money than his two opponents, he says that shows he's not afraid to advocate for bold policy that may make donors unhappy. My party as well, we have things to answer for. And I am doing my best and have been for the last five years through winning elections on platforms that bring, put money in your pocket and bring dignity to your work. Stay with MTN on the air and online. We'll bring you plenty more coverage on all the primary races leading up to Election Day, June 7th. In Missoula, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. And continuing that election coverage, tomorrow we'll introduce you to the five candidates competing for the Republican nomination in the 1st District.